What is going on guys and welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk to you guys about my stock footage workflow in terms of editing and when I say that I'm talking about all the way through from sort of raw asset curation from a hard drive all the way through to export in Premiere Pro. So without further ado let's get straight into it. So to begin with for anyone who's interested I basically curate content both for myself which I will normally do from an SD card and a camera like the one I'm filming on now or uh, the other way that I do it is that I will curate content for other people. Now those people will, you know, they, they tend to be this, um, you know, shooters, drone pilots or vloggers for example and what they will do is they'll either Dropbox me content, in which case I'll, I'll download that to uh, my Synology box which is behind us here, I'll show you, get to that in a second, or they will uh, mail me in a hard drive from wherever they are in the world. So I'm going to walk you through now uh, a workflow that I do for people who send me content and I can do this as well for uh, my own content but this is sort of a bit more complex and I think it's going to be more interesting uh, for those of you who say handle much larger workflows you know I mean if you're doing something like maybe 20 clips this kind of thing is a bit overkill but you know if you're ramped up to say hundreds or even thousands of clips something like this is probably going to be much more advantageous for someone in your position uh, if you're looking to sort of upscale your stock footage to the next level and work with much bigger workloads. So to show you guys my basic editing setup here, I currently use a Lenovo laptop, which I know doesn't sound ideal, but luckily for me this one is very powerful for what I need. The downside to this, however, is that it doesn't play 4K back straight out of the laptop, which is why I have this very big monitor here, and it's also fantastic for editing. And the other downside that I suffer from is that I don't have a lot of space. I've only got about sort of 250 gig on my main drive and about 50 gig on the other. And unfortunately for me, my computer reached through that very quickly and I go through a hell of a lot of content every month. So I use a lot of external hard drives. And as I also edit for other people, I actually have this Synology drive just here in my window. This has basically got about 25 terabytes on it, which is the one on the left just here. This drive just here was sent to me by one of the guys who I work with right now, and I'm editing his stock content for him. Uh, so basically I can hook that up to the Synology drive just here, and it allows me to transfer content between the two. I don't necessarily want all of the content that he's got on this drive because there's a lot of raw stuff that isn't applicable to stock footage for the projects that he does, but everything that is usable, I can go ahead and just transfer it over. For anybody who doesn't necessarily have enough space on their computer though, I just recommend that you probably pick up some external hard drives like this. Um, they can come really cheap on eBay. Some of them, are, you know, they can go up to like one or two terabytes for less than a hundred pounds. And uh, that's probably going to do a lot of people. Before I started working with other people, this is the kind of thing that I normally use. I've got a lot of my old content on there. I've also got some as well just down there that I, uh, I've got a lot of content on as well from previous projects. And that just, you know, that would do a lot of you. I imagine, I imagine the Synology box is probably overkill for a lot of people who sort of have less than say 10 terabytes of footage to go through. But just to sort of give you guys my uh, editing setup in terms of how I actually curate, when I'm going through my content just here, the way that I go about doing it is I actually have my footage, my raw footage showing on the laptop that I can just play back in the laptop here. So this is currently coming off of the drive in the window. And you can currently see that, you know, that's just a simple GoPro shot, people going down the river. It may be usable depending on whether or not I want it. And of course that's currently on the drive just here. Now to show you guys that drive on my actual big screen here, uh, this is basically how I get to the content on the Synology box. On the left here, you've got that clip that I can then drag and drop to my Synology drive for editing, which I've actually just done just here. You can see that that's just coming to this folder that I've created for it. And then once I've done that, I then have all of the clips that I actually need to then go into Premiere and edit it myself and export it, etc. for uploading to the stock footage agencies. Just switched over to my desktop. Just before we jump into Premiere, I just want to show you guys now uh, my file structure. So I've basically got uh, one of the shooters who I work with here. This is his file. And as you can see, I've got my exported clips, the files for Premiere Pro, my raw assets here, and any model releases or you know property releases in the folder here. Just to sort of dive in here into these, just to show you the file one quickly. The HD one is the drive, and then I've got a list of uh, different locations that I have from that drive for the file structure. Now the Philippines one is one that I've already um, processed. So as you can see here, I've actually got uh, quite a few files for my Premiere Pro and um, actual folders in here. But that's basically how I keep all of them. 
Just coming back now uh, to the main part, to show you sort of the same again with uh, the exported clips. Same story here. I've basically got each one set up inside of the folders. Basically, guys, that's how I how I actually keep all of my files. Um, as they are the raw content I've identified is in here as well so we're gonna basically be working on these drone clips the this GH4 content and the GoPro content okay guys so I'm inside of Premiere Pro now I'm just gonna create a new project uh, file and uh, I'm just gonna enter the location so we're gonna need to make a new uh, folder for this inside of our files we're gonna have it as the uh, Dominican Republic one Get that set up there. <clears throat> so I'm ready to roll now with my file. Uh, catch format was HDV, and we're going to go ahead and open up this project now. So basically, now I'm inside Premiere. The first thing I'm going to do is actually import his content. So I'm just going to do that quickly here by dragging and dropping the files over. So I've basically got my drone, my GH4, and my GoPro, so I can go ahead and import those. As you can see now, it's just importing. I'm just going to speed this up. So now that we've actually imported our folders, you can see them down here on the left hand side. I'm actually just going to move this up here for us so we can have a look at them a bit more here. So to start us off, uh, I'm just going to show you guys how I actually structure these once I've imported them. So I'm currently in the GoPro folder here. I've got some clips of him on his uh, on this go-karting trip that he went on and he's also got some other clips. But what I'll actually do now before I start editing is I create some bins and I like to have uh, a raw bin and I also have an edited bin. Now the reason for that is because when I come to export them, I need to be able to find them quickly and I know then that all of the content that I process will be in the edited bin. So the way that I go about doing this now that I'm actually ready to edit is I'll just pick any clip in here. Normally I work backwards because I just find that more efficient, but I will right click the clip now and do new sequence from clip. Now that's automatically going to adjust our project settings and everything to the actual clip's resolution and frame rate. So the first thing I'm going to do now is just take the audio out um, and I'm still conforming clips so the playback's going to be a little laggy but just to sort of give you guys an idea of what the clip is, it's basically a POV GoPro shot of someone going down a zip line here. As a lot of you probably know, a stock clip is about, you know, between 8 to 30 seconds. You can go longer, but to be safe, I tend to keep it under 30 seconds. What I'll do is I'll, you know, I watched it back and uh, I'm going to find a nice in and out point now to actually cut the clip. So this part here where they're getting ready isn't necessarily particularly interesting. I don't believe the shot really needs this. Really what I want is just from the point of takeoff uh, as they go down the zip line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find that point there. So we don't need any of this. Okay, now the action started. So let's just go back there and actually find the sweet spot. So this looks quite nice. We can see we're on a wooden platform and then she's just gonna come off here and then sail down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to this here, find a nice point, I quite like this, just before the action begins. And then I can cut this here by just inserting a cut and then getting rid of this. I can cut it, remove that to the start of the timeline. A much more efficient way to do this is if I just reverse this, go back there again, and actually just press Q on my keyboard that will make the cut automatically and move it to the front of my timeline so now the clip just starts there straight away so that's looking pretty good now the action is just going out so now we're going to find a nice out point and again guys you could just cut it on your timeline and remove it but a much better way to do that is actually by pressing W um, and it basically does the same thing so I'm just going to find a nice in point there these guys here I don't have model release forms for and since I want this to actually be a commercial clip I don't want their faces really in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it here just as her hands covering up that one guy and hopefully that's going to be acceptable here if we just cut this. So that's a nice clip now of uh, this person zip lining through the trees. We've made our nice in and out points and we're probably ready to grade this now. So what I'll do is I'll go over here to my basic color correction on my um, Lemetri color and I'll start grading it. So the exposure on this is actually okay. You know, with the skies nicely exposed, the trees are looking quite bright. There's a bit of mugginess going on here. I think that's happened on the camera, but for the actual shot itself, it kind of works. Um, I'm not gonna have too much of a problem with this, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and grade it. What I'd like to do for stock footage is I like to do a bit of a grade, but I don't like to grade it to the point where the person buying it can't grade it themselves should they wish to, you know, stylize it for a project. My goal here is to try and make this pop 
and the agencies, I want it to pop out at people who are browsing this content, but I don't want my colors to be so baked that they can't actually edit it themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just say, add like a little bit of a contrast here. I tend to sort of bump this up between anywhere from five to 15, depending on the shot. Um, and just sort of having a look here, I might play about with the saturation a little bit. It's already quite, quite saturated, but I could, I could bump that up, say another five, just there. Let's just put in 105 just there. The shadows and highlights actually look all right on this. Just playing about with this right now, I don't actually really feel like I need to change too much of that. The trees are looking quite nice as they are. I might just take the shadows down by 10 there so just to sort of help bring out, oh, take it down by 10, sorry. Just sort of help bring out more of the contrast there. This shot's looking really nice now. I quite like this. Um, everything's in focus. I'm, I'm, I'm really actually happy with how that's come out. So I think that's pretty much done and I'm ready now to go on to the next one. Just before I get into editing the next clip now, just going back to my raw and edited folders, what I now do is I will drop my raw clip here which we've just edited into the raw folder and my edited one can go into the edited folder. So once I'm done, I'm going to come back to this, but once I'm done I can then open up my edited folder and I have all my edited clips in here ready for exporting. Just to go back to the bin now, so I'm just going to quickly time lapse this of me editing all of these clips and I'm also going to edit all of the drone ones and the GH4 ones and then we're going to go back and actually you know do the same thing in each of these and then we're going to actually get to the point where we're ready to export all of these clips in these different edited folders. So given that I've got three different kinds of footage, I've got the GH4, the GoPro and the drone content, um, I'm going to have three edited folders to export at the end of this and I'm going to move on and show you guys how to do that once I've finished curating these. Okay guys, that just about wraps up my editing now on the stock footage. So if I go back to now my project file, you can see that my GoPro uh, folder, my drone folder, and my GH4 folder all have two items inside them. And they're basically the raw and the edited folders. And inside of those, of course, I've got all of my clips ready to export. So now what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna go ahead and just save this project now. That's all wrapped up and done, I'm happy with that. So now that I'm all done with editing my stock footage, I can go ahead and open Adobe Media Encoder. And then what I'm gonna do is simply go to the file here uh, and basically add that into my Adobe Media Encoder so I can then begin to export the files. So if I just go here to my file folder that we set up earlier, you can see here that I've got my Dominican Republic. Opening that up then gives me the file. I can go ahead and open that. And now it's just going to start bringing in all of this content into Adobe Media Encoder, whereupon it's going to actually ask me, you know, what I want to export. So we're just going to wait now. So we're just going to wait for that to load now. So now that I've opened it up, it's choosing me what I actually want to import. And as you can see here, if I just show you the GoPro folders, you can see my edited one, it already has it pre-opened for me. But I can just now go ahead, hold down shift and highlight all of these clips and it's only going to import uh, ones out of the edited folder. So I can go ahead and press import now. And you can see here behind uh, the adding items to queue button, you can actually see that it's doing that in the background and it's bringing all of these into Adobe Media Encoder. Now I don't actually need Premiere Pro open anymore. So what I can do is actually just maximize this. So now we're basically looking at all of our edited clips inside of Adobe Media Encoder and what I need to do now is actually set them up with the right presets etc to export and tell them where to do that. Now what I can actually do here is just take them all and then where you see it says output file here I can take any one of these it doesn't particularly matter so I've just taken this uh, DJI drone file for example. So now I can go ahead and assign where I want my export files to go so just opening up this up now, I'm going to make a folder, let's call it Dominican Republic. Enter there for my export files and select this folder. And now it's going to actually assign all of these to that folder. Now what I can do as well is actually just select the presets for doing this, which is gonna bring up our export options. And this of course is going to change it for each of them. You can see here I've got the GoPro. Now I know that all of the content that I've just edited is 1920 by 1080. So what I can do is actually just use a preset that I've made here, but for the sake of this, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make a custom one just so we can actually work through this together. So to begin with, with format, I'm gonna take QuickTime. Some people do use H.264, but QuickTime is gonna give you the best possible quality without, without 
losing any of the detail. For my video codec, I use Photo JPEG, and then what I do is I come down here. Since I know my content, as I can see, my source is 1920 by 1080, I can actually just go ahead and change this as such. You, of course, will need to do that um, for your footage, whether you're working in HD or 4K. Quality, I find 90 is fine. You can bump that up to 95 or even 100 if you want, but uh, I find that you don't lose much, if any, quality around the 90 mark, but it will certainly save you on your file size. Now, coming on to frame rates, uh, just to sort of go over this briefly, uh, all of my source footage was in 29.97 frames per second, so I'm going to leave that as such because I know the agencies do accept that. Obviously, you need to do that according to what you filmed in. So if you filmed in, like, say, 25 frames per second, for example, your footage is going to need to be set to that. Um, you're going to be able to see that again in your source up here. You can see that mine's 29.97. So we can go ahead and leave that as is. I tend to render at maximum depth because I want, you know, I want to be able to see that as it's rendering. And then I also use use maximum render quality down here. Now I'm pretty much set up there. I also have export audio unticked as I do not want to be exporting any of the audio from my stock footage clips. Most of the time I find that that's not needed. And uh, that's pretty much it guys. I'm now ready to export. So I can go ahead and press OK here, and that's actually going to manually apply that to each of these clips. Now to quickly show you guys how to actually save this as, as a custom one, what you can actually do here is uh, if you like these settings that you've got and you're gonna be using this in the future, what you can do is actually just press the save preset button. Uh, and that's actually gonna allow you to make a copy of this. So I could do just for example here, uh, stock footage, HD 29 FPS uh, for my content here, but as I don't particularly use this that much and I'm only editing for someone else here, I'm actually going to not use that, but you could do that if you wanted to. So now we're pretty much ready to export, guys, and uh, I tend to leave this running in the background, you know, when I'm having some food or I'm away from the computer just learning to export all of these clips out. So that's pretty much it, guys. My clips are now ready to export. I hope you've uh, picked up some tips from watching how I do it. It'd be really cool to see how you guys do that. I do want to say a big thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. It's really cool to get the feedback on that front. I'm glad people are actually taking an interest and it's really cool to sort of meet other people who are interested in this business and do stock footage. So I mean, if you haven't already and you are interested in this kind of thing, it'd be great if you could subscribe. It really does help the channel. 